Hi everybody, uh, it's Nolan here, and uh, what I would like to do with you in this video is deal with bar graphs. Uh, we are going to uh, do four things, I have four goals. The first is to evaluate if a bar graph is appropriate for a data set. The second is to create and format a single bar graph in Excel, and I'm talking about the desktop version of Excel, not Excel 365. The two work differently. Uh, we're also going to uh, be able to create and format a multiple bar graph in Excel. And the fourth goal is to be able to paste a bar graph from Excel into a PowerPoint or Word document. So uh, let's cover this first goal right away um, to evaluate if a bar graph is appropriate for a data set. So when do we use a bar graph? Uh, a bar graph is is used when you have a data set that includes multiple groups that you want to compare. And there needs to be quantitative data. You have to have numbers in here somewhere. Um, and so you're not trying to show a change over time. If you're trying to show a change over time, that's when you use a line graph. There is an exception to that rule where you have what appears to be time on the x-axis. I'll show you uh, some exceptions to that rule. So there's our first goal. Uh, we use a bar graph if we're trying to compare groups. So let's look at a, a, some examples of data, um, and I'll show you how to create and format uh, some, uh, some different bar graphs. Okay, so here I have some scientific data. Uh, I want to show how certain substances have, uh, have changed temperature. So these are the groups that I am comparing, alcohol, sand, steel, water, wood. And then each of these numbers is associated with that substance. If you don't know how to enter data into Excel, this is not the video for you. You need to go figure out those basics before you can uh, do any graphing or data entry in Excel. This really works best if you have these in columns. So you have one column where you've got your category Categories, in this case, they are different substances, and have another column in which there's your data that's associated with each of those, uh, of those individuals in that category. By the way, never put units inside of a cell. Um, you can do some uh, dollar signs and things like that, but you wouldn't want to you know, put like a letter inside this piece of data because Excel gets confused by that. So only keep numbers in your cells. That's the only thing you should have. So I'm going to create a bar graph here, uh, and I can tell that a bar graph is appropriate because there's no time involved, and I'm really not looking to correlate anything. That's what a scatter plot would be for. I just want to compare these different groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, highlight the data that I need, just click and drag from one corner to the next. Um, and so I'm just going to go up here into insert. I'm going to click it and I'm going to go find this first graph right here. It's, it says insert column or bar chart. Um, there's a very similar looking one down here, which is not a bar graph. Um, this is something else. It's a little bit more advanced as for statistics. Don't choose this one. Um, we're just going to choose this very first little chart here, insert column or bar chart. Uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, options you can choose here. You can do horizontal if you want them sideways. You can do them up and down. There's 3D stuff that you can play with. Uh, I'm not interested in playing with any of that. So I'm just going to pick this very first one, uh, temperature change. Um, and uh, right away, I can tell that my graph is not really uh, formatted right. So I'm going to show you how to fix the formatting on this graph. So one of the first things I notice is that there's no access titles, uh, which always bothers me. I wish that Excel would give you that by default. Um, I'll show you how to add those. And I also don't like the title. So we're going to fix both of these things. So I'm going to add access titles uh, down at the bottom here. These are our substances. So I'm going to click this plus sign, and it will show this little uh, menu with some boxes you can click, access titles. If you click that, it will kind of reformat the graph and re resize things so that it fits these titles in here. So to um, edit a title, you just have to click on it, and now it turns into a little text box that you can uh, edit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fix my access titles. Okay, so I've gone ahead and fixed those, uh, those uh, the titles of the axes, and I'm also going to change the title of the whole graph here. So same thing, I'm just going to, to select in this text box, um, and I'm going to fix that as well. Okay, so temperature change by group, that's fine. Um, and uh, I will also show you a, a little bit of a, a extra trick over here uh, where you can um, sort things. So let's say that, uh, that I want these arranged from least to most. So all that you need to do is to highlight the data that you want to arrange. Um, and then I'm going to show you how you can organize this. So now that I have selected my, my data here, uh, I'm in the Home tab. I'm just going to find this over here where it says Sort and Filter. I'm going to click that. Uh, and I want this arranged smallest to largest, so I'm going to click that. And it's going to ask you if you want to expand the selection. If you say Continue with the current selection and sort, what it's going to do is it's going to move the numbers but not 
the categories. And you don't want to do that because now the category is detached from the number. Um, so we do want to expand that selection. So I've got my numbers uh, highlighted. I'm going to say smallest to largest and then expand the selection. That's going to apply this, this rearranging over to these categories as well. So now when I click sort, you'll see what it has done. It has rearranged both the substances and the numbers. Um, and so now we can see that here's our data, right? And I've arranged them from, from least to most. So there's things I still don't love about the formatting on this graph. Um, one thing I don't like is that it's in this light gray color. The text is a light gray that doesn't print very well. And I don't think it looks very good. So I'm going to change that to black. So all you have to do is just click on the white space of the graph. And then any, any font stuff that you select up here will apply to the whole entire graph. If you want a font change size or something to apply just to one part of the graph, you can just select that part. Uh, and then, you know, if I increase my font size, right, I can make my title bigger or smaller, or whatever. Um, so let's say I want all of the text in the graph to be a little larger. So I'm going to select this white space and I can either click up on this A or maybe I can select a given font size that I like. Um, you know, this, this is a bit overkill. I don't think it needs to be this big, but let's say that you want it that way. Um, and, uh, uh, I'm also um, going to change the uh, the font typeface. So I can, again, click on the graph or on a particular uh, text box. I'm just going to click on the white part. And I don't really like Calibri, so I'm going to choose a different one. Um, uh, let's say Times New Roman. I don't really like Times New Roman, but maybe you do. So we have this for our graph, and we're all set to go. I'm going to do a little bit of, of color changes here. I'm going to show you how you can change these, um, these columns so that each one isn't all the same color. You might want to try to differentiate your group so it's a little easier to tell them apart. So to change the color of a particular column, all you have to do is, is click on it. Um, so if, if I just click on the column from from let's say a cell, let's say I'm you know working on a cell and I click on a column, they'll all be highlighted and I can't change an individual color that way. Um, but I could change all of them if I wanted. Uh, so I could uh, right click and go to uh, format data series. And up here I have some options. I'm going to choose this uh, this paint bucket that indicates color. Uh, I can go to fill and I can change you know this color to whatever I want, you know, red or whatever. And so they were all highlighted for me to do that. If I wanna change an individual Bar. So let's say I want the individual bars to be different colors. I can click on a bar now. Notice that as I'm now that I'm already in the bars, if I click each one, each one is highlighted. You see these two tiny little circles that appear uh, on the corners, I guess four circles. So let's say I want water to be a different color. I'm just going to go over here, make sure I'm, I've got my paint bucket selected, uh, and I'm going to choose a color that seems appropriate for water. There we go. Uh, alcohol, let's choose a color that. I want for alcohol, maybe a gray, even though alcohol isn't gray. Uh, wood, uh, you can go to picture or texture fill, and we can choose down here where it says texture. Oh, well, there's some wood. Okay, that looks good. Uh, steel, let's find some color or, or pattern. Maybe you can choose pattern fill. Um, let's choose one that seems appropriate for steel. Uh, there we go. And then finally, sand. That sounds like something for a texture. Click on text picture or texture fill. Uh, go over here. Ah, there we go. There's some sand. And so what I've done now is I formatted each individual bar uh, with a different color, a different pattern or texture, however it is that you want it. Um, so my graph looks beautiful. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to copy and paste that into another document. So first of all, suppose that maybe I want to take my graph and put it into a, a PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to uh, hop over here to my to my page that's got my graph in it. I'm going to get rid of that window. And all you need to do is just click on the white space of the graph right click and copy and i'm going to open up my powerpoint and just right click and you have some options to paste um, probably the simplest and easiest one is to select this very last one that's called picture what this has done is it's inserted a, a non-editable image file into my PowerPoint. Um, I can't change the font. I can't change the colors. The only thing you can change here is the size and sort of the aspect ratio if you want to change the way that that graph looks. Um, but um, yeah, I usually like to paste an editable uh, object into uh, my documents. So uh, if you just right click and click here, that will paste a picture. But let's say I don't want just a picture. I actually want to um, uh, copy and paste a an object that's editable. So uh, that's called using the destination theme uh, and and embed. So that's the first selection here. So if you take this, uh, if you right click in your white space and if you click on that very first paste option, what we now have is a uh, an object that is editable. And so what I can do is I can select this object and I can you know resize it, uh, and I can do other things to it. 
Uh, so suppose that I, you know, I don't like the my color for water anymore. I can now deal with it, this exactly as I did in Excel. Just right click on water, format data point, and now you can go ahead and you can, you know, change some more things. So maybe I want to change the color of my water. I really didn't like that choice. There we go. That's better. Um, you can change, you know, the font. You can make the text size larger. You can make all those changes now in this new document so that you don't have to go back into your Excel document, make those changes, and then copy and paste. Uh, you may find that to be helpful. Um, and uh, I certainly do to be able to actually edit that in the document. Uh, Microsoft Word works the same way. If I've got my graph and I want to copy and paste that into a Word document, let's open that up. Again, you have those same choices. You can either paste a picture or you can paste uh, an editable file. Um, and uh, now you can you can adjust that in your Word document. Um, and uh, so there we go. Uh, so we've hit almost all of our goals right now, except for uh, doing a multiple uh, bar graph. So I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so here I have some data. Um, let's say I'm trying to compare some sales volume for a given year. Uh, I have my categories here. Uh, cosmetic supplements, food and drink. These are my categories, and these categories are each attached to this whole row of numbers. Um, and what I've included here are numbers for each day of the week. And you might be saying, "Hold on, wait a minute. That 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 breaks the rule here in terms of." Uh, you're, if, if you have time involved, you're not supposed to use a bar graph. There is an exception to that, and here's what the exception is. If the time is cyclical, you can do that. So what this data is really comparing is for any given Monday, how do my cosmetic supplements, food and drink compare to any given Tuesday, any given Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Um, this is true for a type of graph called a climatograph, where you compare uh, the precipitation for a given month, uh, but a, a year is a cycle. So this is saying any given January, this is our precipitation. Any given February, this is our precipitation. So that is an exception. If a week repeats, right, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's going to repeat. I, I didn't include the weekend here, but these are repeating times. Um, so that's okay to, to do a bar graph uh, if you have a repeating cycle like that. I'm going to go to insert. I've highlighted all my stuff. I'm going to select this bar graph here. And again, you just have to select the very first one. There's actually other ways to do this. Um, you can choose a bar graph like, let's say, this one. Uh, this is a stacked column, a stacked bar graph, where it actually stacks the categories on top of themselves. Um, or you could choose this first one. Let's do a clustered column just for the, the purposes here of this video. So what this does, I'm going to resize this a little bit. So what this does right away, uh, once I've highlighted all this stuff, uh, it has automatically put the uh, that money on the, the y-axis, and it's got the days of the week on the x-axis. If you want, you can add your access titles. Um, and what we're really doing is we're comparing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So these really are our groups that we're comparing. We're comparing Monday to Tuesday. We're comparing Tuesday to Wednesday and Wednesday to Thursday and Friday. Um, but within those groups, we also have other groups. So for each, uh, let me expand this a little more. Inside Monday, I'm comparing cosmetics to supplements and food and drink, we can see very easily that, well, cosmetics is my moneymaker. That's the one that's making us the most money. Supplements and food and drink are pretty stable. So we can see as we compare these throughout the week, they don't change very much. And food and drink really doesn't bring us in a lot of money. We can also see that um, for cosmetics, we see a little bit of a slump on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So if you were trying to show a particular period of time, you probably want to use a line graph. But because we're comparing Monday as a particular day of the week out of many uh, repeats, we can we can use this kind of a graph, and really that's it. I mean, you can you know you can play around with this. Um, you can choose you know um, you can always right click on the graph area and you can say change chart type, um, and so if you want at that point you can actually choose some of these you know try some of these other ones. Um, you know, in this particular stacked column, it it takes everything out of a hundred percent, and so, so you can of course change the colors uh, in these uh, just as I showed you earlier. Um, really, it, it works all the same. So a multiple bar Bar graph is really no more complicated than a single bar graph. It's just a matter of arranging your data correctly. Um, so I've got each of my categories here, and then I've got whatever associated data for each of those categories going across uh, in these rows. So we should have uh, hit all of the goals for this video. You should be able to evaluate if a bar graph is appropriate for a data set. We should be able to create and format a single bar graph in Excel and a multiple bar graph. And you should be able to paste a bar graph from Excel into PowerPoint or Word document. Uh, I hope that you found this useful. Uh, until next time, remember, you can learn anything.